Witam Państwa serdecznie, Błażej Hrabkowicz. Jesteśmy na 24. Międzynarodowym Festiwalu Filmowym Camera Image w Bydgoszczy. Our guest is uh, the recipient of the, of the award for outstanding achievement in documentary filmmaking, Jay Rosenblatt. Hello. Hello. You, were, uh, you are a psychologist still and you have some experience in therapy. Uh, in your filmmaking, do you remain a therapist? in a sense, or do you leave that behind completely and become someone else? Um, well, I'm not a psychologist. I did work as a counselor. Uh, I worked on a psychiatric in a psychiatric hospital. You have experience I in have experience. this work, yeah. Um, and I think that experience doesn't leave you. So yes, it still pervades my work. Uh, many of my films are psychological. Uh, some of my motivation for making films is the same motivation I had when I worked as a counselor, which is to help people, to um, confront people with some issues that might need looking at. So my films tend to deal with issues that I think are important, but sometimes issues that we tend to bury deep. Repress. Repress. Yeah, or issues that are more part of our shadow side, our darker side, and try to bring light to it. So there's some similarities. It's, it's very different way of working. One of is with art. Different language, different form. Different language, but some of the motivation for myself is similar. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that uh, this sort of popular psychology or popular cinema sometimes give us uh, two simple answers? and two simple views on what it means to be a human being? Yeah, I think, sure. I think Hollywood films tend to do that. I think um, formula, films that follow a formula, very simplistic. Films with a happy ending are very unrealistic. Uh, but not all cinema. I think some cinema delves deeper. Um, the most successful cinema for me is cinema that deals in layers. So there's a maybe a an entertainment level, but also if you dig deeper, there's a lot of more important issues that are being dealt with. Maybe not always in a superficial way or on the surface, but it's in there. Uh, a lot of it's the viewer, what we bring to the experience. So I think- What we project on the we, screen, so to What we project speak. and yeah. what we see. Um, some people that I think are more maybe reflective or deeper thinkers, we'll see more in a film than others. Some films, it's not there. Mm -hmm. But in other films, yes, it's there. And I hope, hope my films have multi-layers. Mm -hmm. Do you have any maybe have favorite directors who you think have mastered this art of um, making multi-layered cinema, entertainment maybe on some level, but deep down there's something else to that, something more to that? Um, I have a lot of filmmakers I respect. Um, uh, maybe one of the easiest examples is Alfred Hitchcock, who I think was a great entertainer, but he was. there was also a lot of layers to his work. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was dealing with a lot of psychological issues through his characters, uh, sometimes in the story. Yeah. His, the films the look, themes. his films look like he read a lot of Freud, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris Marker was a, a filmmaker that I respected who had very layered uh, work, mm -hmm. uh, essay films. Um, and I was, I would say, had a lot of influence on the way I work. Because you, you, you're, uh, you mentioned Chris Marker and you, uh, the achievement uh, that you're celebrated, uh, celebrated for here is in documentary filmmaking, but many critics and many viewers view your work as a sort of a hybrid form between documentary filmmaking and, vi and visual essay. Do you agree with that? I Since do. you mentioned Chris Marker. I was making uh, films for years before I even made what would be called a documentary. And I didn't call it a documentary kind of the, the outside world said, oh, this is a documentary, and I thought, oh, okay. What did you call it? Did you call it anything? At the time, I was probably calling it more experimental, mm -hmm. which was not a great term because, uh, first of all, it's very ghettoized. Uh, you don't, it's hard to get experimental work seen. Mm -hmm. um, looking back, I would say it was more essay 
uh, a, a kind of a, like you said, a hybrid of documentary. But documentary's a, a good label too, because these days I think documentary has become much more creative and it's not a negative word at all. So yeah, I'm happy to be associated with documentary and it allows for more uh, people to see the work. Mm. Also more funding possibilities. You're very well known for your uh, delving, for delving into evil and people cap capabil capability to do evil. And uh, in terms of the historical figures which we associate with evil, like Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. You have on the one hand the view that he is just a Satan, demonized view of evil, and on the other hand you have the, the notion of banality of evil, that this is a very human uh, trait. Where do you think your work in terms of dealing with evil fit into this well, uh, the sphere? The main film you're referring to is a film I made called Human Remains, which uh, is about, ostensibly, it's about the personal lives of five dictators, Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, Mao Zedong, Franco, and Mao. Yeah. And um, I think what that film is about is more the, the banality of evil. The, the fact, to me, it's more chilling when you think of them as human. If you think of them as monsters, then they're separate from us and we have no responsibility. Yeah. But if you think of them as human, you have to take responsibility for how they come to power. They don't do it alone, they do it with lots of support. Yeah. And sometimes in a democratic process, sometimes like Hitler. In a, sometimes in a democratic process. And uh, I think we're seeing that all over the world right now. So unfortunately, I think that film is very timely. Um, yeah, I, I think that People are capable of very horrible things, and it's not just a few individuals. Yeah. But do you also try in your films to present a capability of doing good? Because also this, there is also this notion that in the extreme circumstances, people are capable of doing horrible things, but also heroic things. Would you agree with that notion as Oh, well? absolutely. In fact, um, the film I made right after Human Remains is a film called King of the Jews, and it's about Jesus. So um, I'm very much interested in the light. And as well as the darkness. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's what keeps me going, you know? So um, I think many of my films have a spiritual dimension to it. You mentioned about how a lot of your work is, unfortunately, timely, and how we try to confront viewers with other people and maybe with their own uh, ideas. Do you think that in terms of a contemporary, what we see contemporary in the world, xenophobia and so on and so on, it is particularly important to understand the ideas, the identity of another human being? Yeah, of course. There's nothing more important, really. We have to see our connections with each other. I mean, the separation that we see in the world creates so many problems. I think if you don't feel separate from other people, if you realize that we're all kind of in it together, it's very hard to perpetrate these horrific atrocities. You have to dehumanize the other in exactly. order to commit those crimes. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I don't, my films, I don't think, provide any answers, but hopefully they have questions that are important mm -hmm. to, to look inside and, and to stimulate discussion. I feel, probably I feel best about my work when somebody comes to me and said, yeah, we saw your film and we couldn't stop talking about it for the next hour. That, I mean, that's a great compliment. Our conversation lasted a little shorter than an hour, but nevertheless, thank you. Oh, my pleasure, thank you. <laughs>